Hi guys and welcome to Bomb Anime. It's your girl Rukat. And Big Boy Summer here bringing you our part two on Trapped in a Dating Sim. I really like the fact that the novels descended from adventurers, but at the same time, it makes it weird because I don't get the reason for the class change, but I do also understand why they feel like they're better than everybody else. It's a nice take because novels in general think that they're better than the rest of the population. You know, they have more money, they live in better areas, they have more power, but these guys, well, not not them specifically, but their ancestors actually earned it with hard graft, not through just being born into it, which I like. That's how it normally happens though, isn't it? Nobility doesn't just start out where noble. They start out with hard graft and then learn the secrets of keeping it within generations. Do you know it takes two generations to lose generational wealth? Just, just a side note for you guys. One generation will make it, the next generation will squander it, and the third generation is broke and goes, my granddad used to be X. So that's how it goes. And even what's his name said that these guys have been training hard to get partners and whatnot. And so they've kept that strength in the bloodline. Yeah, I like that as well. They're, they're not just sitting there on their thrones, as you will. They are actually fighting still, becoming strong, making sure that their magic power is strong as well. But it makes me think, who makes up the lowest class? And how did they get there? If the adventurers are now the nobles, then who are the lowest class? The current adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I really liked about this anime? And we said this in the beginning and I'll say it now. Episode 1 showed you exactly what was going on. This anime was a mishmash of a lot of different elements of geekness. Especially in the gaming world. They had air fights, they had dating sims, MMO stuff, AI, Pokedexes and so on. Like They had it all. And I said this in part 1 that I was worried that it was going to be too much and they won't know where to go with it. I was wrong. I think they handled it really nicely, having all of that to work with. When doing a part two, I very rarely want to speak about individual characters, but this one has made me want to talk about them, and I'll just start with Leon, because his personality is the best. He is such a d but he's intentionally a d but with his words, his actions actually show who he truly is, and I like that the characters he hated while he was playing the game are the same characters that he's actually become closest to and that includes the five nobles the prince and his friends that he absolutely hated while playing the game and no matter how much he tries to get away from them whilst being in this world he just can't because his life is so entangled with all of theirs he tried to bag one of their moms <laughs> the queen <laughs> His personality is good. Yeah, fam, he's trying to beat his mum, fam. I'm just saying, that right there sums his personality up for me. That was hilarious. Yeah, the whole down. thing was so... <laughs> when he got caught as well. But, you know, that's another thing. <laughs> Sorry. Every single time I think about it, man beat you in a mech suit and then a couple of episodes later is moving to your mum. <laughs> My guy is a true G. He's a rolled man. He comes from ends and he's my kind of guy. Then we have Marie. I want to know what her true identity is because at first I actually thought that she was Leon's sister in the real world but as we watched it she seems to know a bit too much for her to be his sister. His sister didn't play the game and just told him to you know finish it off. She didn't get very far so Marie's knowledge is way too much. And also how did she get the, the healing powers that she has because Leon didn't get anything. I think she did what Leon did. So Leon went straight to go and get Loxion because he knew exactly where it was and he had purchased it in game in order to use it. So she already knew where the saints artifacts were. So she went there first before coming into the school. She is also a transfer student. Marie and Livia are both transfer students, isn't it? So she took that little bit of time to go and steal some fangs. I think that's how she got the healing power in the first place. But I do like the way that they explained how Livia got her healing powers through studying because Leon did all the hard work so that she didn't have to and she could go to college and become the better person that she is. 
I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, Livia was the next. I liked that aspect as well because Leon thought that he was making her weak by constantly stepping in for her and fighting her battles so that she didn't have to become a stronger person. But like you said, him stepping in for her instead of having to deal with all of the bullying actually allowed her to be able to concentrate on her studies. But I don't think that's how she got her healing powers. The way I understood the world was that people had powers, yeah. but they need to study to make them better, yeah. which still makes me think, how did Marie get her powers in the first place she's not even of this world she's just been put here and she somehow has the healing powers i know she's out here trying to take all of the saints artifacts hopefully in season two leon and livia herself can yank them out of her possession because they do not belong to her hopefully leon lives my best life and ends up with both livia and angie i mean like if there's a bag of people a bag of guys trying to get one girl why can't a bag of girls try to get one guy? I, I believe in that kind of... Um... Oh, shit. Sure. That's like every <laughs> freaking anime. Hey, 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 hey. We're reviewing this one. I'm but talking like, a, I'm talking, a, I'm want... talking about this one. It's trash for mobs here. Mob characters don't get a say in this one. Whatever. All right, yeah. We all know that this is an overdone trope of loads of girls hanging on one guy's <sighs> limp D. Whoa. Look. I said the trope in general. I um, think that both Livia and Angie are way better than they were in the game. Yeah. But then we did hear that Leon actually rushed through his gameplay. So we don't know if this would have been how they would have actually been eventually if he had played it in a different way. The game that he plays seemed to have loads of multiple different types of endings. So maybe they're always that great. Leon also said in episode one that the game was strange for a dating sim game because of the war and the tech aspect, but he didn't really, he said he hadn't really explored that side of things too tough. Yeah, he did say Because he was just trying to plot the game as fast as possible. For his sister. So what is this world really? It kind of reminds me of Doki Doki. It's a game I have never ever played, but I have watched Matt Pat's game theory on the game where it's a dating sim, but the more you play it, the more you realize it's actually not a dating sim and it's more like a horror game with a character being trapped inside. You know, whatever, if you want to play it, play it. I obviously have not, but I just thought that it was interesting that this anime is supposed to be a dating sim, but there's loads of weird things happening that makes us believe that it's not what it seems. I haven't watched that episode. I should definitely jump on that Doki Doki map packing. To be honest, this game, it reminds me of Rising of the Shield Hero, the way that it began, where they came from four different types of Japan, and the one that we're following, the Shield Hero, got it through a book. So he was reading the book and he carried on, and then it ended up being the world he ended up getting into. But I like this kind of isekai, the isekai that sets itself up, <laughs> the self setting isekai. I like it, it's pretty nice. And to be honest, I thought they handled every single time he had a big issue to overcome, he got rewarded for it. It, but every reward was a punishment that that truck <laughs> there was hilarious he just wanted to be chilling in the background but no he had to become a viscount by the end of it do you know what i mean and he wanted like an easy wife he didn't want to have to try and get a wife from the upper echelon because again your title depends on what wife you're allowed to have you can't just marry who you want you have to marry within your league as it will and he was already having such a hard time attracting any of these highborn women as it was or any woman really so the higher his status went the higher it was for him to actually pick a wife and so he wanted a low status probably a nicer person as well because the higher born seem to be you know quite she he's going for the queen <laughs> <laughs> the queen is married he's going for the queen <laughs> so Angie is actually a really great prospect for him because she is quite highborn and her brother was already like, yo, you know, Leon, he's been doing feats, you know, we don't want him just marrying anyone, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, Angie, but... <laughs> Angie, pipe it down. <laughs> is Angie too late because... You know, our girl, Livia, has already told him, you know what, I love you, so give me your answer, Wagwan. I've team have them both. <laughs> Look, look, look. You don't have to fight this corner. <laughs> Every anime's fought it already before you. Listen, for decades. This is this is me throwing my hat in the ring for team have them both. Both of them are already friends. Are you serious? They actually like each other. 
Can you imagine your girlfriends like each other? Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, great. But, and they're comfortable in the same. All right, anyway. Okay. Look, do you know what? <laughs> Even though I'm wanting to throttle you yet again, it's true. We've got the prince and, you know, the other five nobles who are all for Marie, one person. So this world obviously accepts those types of things so this wouldn't be that far out of the yeah. road if he did go for both angie and livia so i like that by the end of this they sort of ended it the way they started with the nobles being against leon although we didn't see a fight between them in the first episode we always knew that he couldn't stand them from the very beginning and it just had a nice circular theme where again they're drooling each other and of course i don't know why they're even coming at him trying to tap challenge him after seeing what he can do he banged up a whole army especially, almost single-handedly sorry go ahead no especially because he helped them although yeah he was kind of the reason why they got turned away from their families no he wasn't yes it was through their own actions but yeah if leon so that's wasn't, it. no if leon wasn't there that wouldn't have happened and leon is an addition from a different world like so he's is, a, a spanner in the work so is marie so it's, it's not his fault it's a combination of the two he's part of the reason why they lost everything but he helped them gain everything back so this duel at the end they really didn't need to be challenging him to anything and they should have already known that they were gonna lose he's clearly stronger than you he fought the black knight and one told him to go retire that whole scene was hilarious by the way <laughs> Guy, you need to watch this. My guy told him, oh, I'm gonna come back for you. <laughs> and he looked him in his eye and said, come back to what? You just lost to a civilian. No life. A bunch control. of kids. Yeah. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Go sit down. He's completely right. <laughs> Go sit down. He's completely right. There's nothing that he will be able to say to his superiors to explain this defeat. You, you got beat by some school kids and really, you kind of got beaten by three people single. Three. No, let's say four because <laughs> there was also the girl with the... Um, the rose magic. Yeah, yeah she's she was really that. cool. She was and her powers are extremely strong and she has her eye on Leon too, so... They don't. Everybody wants a bit of Leon No, D. they don't. All the That's good the ones. whole point. All the good ones want a bit of Leon D. <laughs> okay, and also, look, final note. Rika, this is normally your thing. Hot or complete waste of time? This was a massive part. Every single episode was a banger. All of it led to more of the story and unfolded more things about the world in general and the game. We got constantly introduced to new characters, some that look like they're here to stay and some that are just passing. And they've really set it up so nicely for a season two. There's still so much story left to tell. Do you think it's hot or not? Yeah, this is a massive part. Do you know what? This crept up on me, to be fair. I didn't expect it to be this good because, again, when I heard the premise, I was like, nah. I judged this book by its cover and its synopsis and I was wrong. And this is a massive part. I recommend everyone watch this and you will fall in love with Leon too. So there you have it. Last time around, Big Boy Sam, I thought this was going to be a waste of time, but I thought it was quite hot. And now our final verdict is saying that we both think it was a massive hot, such a great season. What? Wait, whoa, whoa, slow down. You only, you only marked it three out of five. So? You say, he said, I thought it was going to be quite hot. No. Yeah, five. I did. Five. Three out of five versus two out of five. Listen. Majority hot. Just deal with it. And on that note, thank you so much for joining us today. And if you made it this far, we really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Peace.